We are going to be selling three properties in today's video. And if you guys are interested in any of them, more information links will be down in the description down below. What's going on, folks? I know, I know. I'm as well disappointed. I know you guys are probably pissed. Flay, what are you doing? What are you selling? I can't believe you're gonna do this. Listen, Rick, change of plans, okay? A lot has happened. Well, in the last of forever, but it seems like a lot in the last few months, a lot's happened. We moved completely uh, to a different location in a house, and then we started Beefcake Jerky, and then we it went really well, and we sold out, and then uh, we ended up not being able to do the jerky out of there, and so now we gotta find a place to have a new Beefcake Jerky HQ. Uh, so then I started looking at commercial properties and realized commercial properties are really expensive, and I need to sell something, or a few things, in order to get a new Beefcake Jerky HQ figured out. That's really what's going on. Thought about this for a while. I mean, I was considering doing some of these properties, selling some of these properties prior to the Beefcake Jerky fiasco, um, but we really, really want to make sure we dedicate enough resource to Beefcake Jerky because honestly, I think it could be a huge success. You guys absolutely freaking love it. Like I said, it's sold out. It's, it's going to be big, and I know it's going to be big, and I don't want it to suffer because I decided to own 69 different properties across the Midwest that I can't get to now because now I moved and now everything's like two hours away from my house. So we are going to be selling three properties in today's video. And if you guys are interested in any of them, more information and links will be down in the description down below. <sighs> this pains me. This is like, this is up there. This is up there with one of my all time favorite properties I've ever owned, but it's two hours away and it's two hours away and it's two hours away and it's just it that drive just really sucks at three in the morning to go kill a bird we are selling the actual duck lake ladies and gentlemen that is right we bought this thing two years ago we hunted it for two years and it was freaking phenomenal by far the best duck hunting property i've personally ever owned by a mile um and so you might be thinking well Flair, what are you gonna do for duck hunting videos we gotta cross that bridge Closer to duck hunting season. Right now, we need a place for Beefcake Jerky HQ. We'll try to find something. Maybe we find something smaller, less expensive, maybe a lease. Maybe we just public land grind it out this year. Okay, there's options for killing birds. Uh, but this place right here is one that we are going to be listing on the market. It is on the market right now. Um, and we're going to be giving you guys a quick tour of this place in case you guys aren't familiar with it. Uh, but it's got three pit blinds. It's got two pit blinds with power on it. It's got two G frames. Uh, and we have killed a ton. Of Remember, this was when we drain and then we plant all the millet we'll see it's now it's down so you can plant all the millet again and then flood it and man we killed so many birds here teal honkers i mean we shot so many birds in fact we're actually going to roll a few clips here of some of our favorite moments here at the duck lake smoke him see you later dick oh take him We got him. We got it done. Fetch! Kill him. Oh. Yeah! Three! Yep. Nice! See ya. Coming right at us. Look out, look out, look out! Ooh. Some green, some real green. Let's go. <laughs> yep. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Kill him.
Kill him. You got him. With the drop line. Yep. Yep. So Shoo! And just like that, yeah, you see, it's this sucker produces. Okay, I would be lying if it didn't. It, like I said, it pains me. It breaks my heart to to sell it, but it's just it's a location thing. Okay, uh, I can't wake up at 3 a.m. to go try to go kill a duck, um, especially where I live now. The duck hunting's not bad around there. We just got to find a different property. Um, this place was semi close to my old house, and like I said, now it's two hours away from my new house. And we drove down here today, and we've been doing some shredding and some cleaning up and stuff. Make sure it's ready for whoever wants to come check it out. Uh, and it's just that drive that drive is not nice it's just a, it just it's a little too much it's just a little too much uh, if it was deer hunting maybe it'd be a little bit different but duck hunting's always early in the morning uh and i would rather be able to take the money from the sale of this and help get beefcake jerky hq fired up and then maybe there'll be some money left after all we sell all these properties and we can go find something new closer to my house so that being said let's give you guys a quick tour all righty folks well we made it to the first blind this guy this is the pit blind we've shot a ton of birds out of it like i said it's got power it's hooked up and these grates basically slide off you hop in and why bad oh it's got the island god rip the mems i'm telling you this it, this is a I, I it may look like i'm excited right now and i mean i am it, it's gonna be it's gonna be good like i said this is gonna be the right move i'm telling you right now it's gonna be the right move to invest some money back in beefcake jerky uh banjo just he's adamant about selling more meat to you guys so and all you guys love his meat i can't deny that okay uh but man remember the island videos god we shot so many birds off that island oh i miss the island but we also got this pit right here so when it gets real nice and cold you go down in here, yeah, concrete floor, nice grill. and it's got a grill in there, and power. power, yeah, it's got it's got pretty much everything in it. So we, we really only hunted this thing a handful of times. It was just when it got really, really cold. You could not get cold sitting in this thing, because like I said, you're freaking underground, you put a heater in there, and you are mint, ready to rock and roll. So this is blind number one, it's out on the peninsula, facing that way, and we've got blind number two right over there. Shoo! All right, this one right here. This blind, boy, did we shoot some out of this. I mean, you got the shells to prove it right here, son. So this blind right here, loaded down with some decoys, by the way. You make her the right offer, hey, decoys are yours. Uh, but blinds come with the property. So this guy, it's a little four-man. This was, and it's portable, it's on skids. So you can actually drag it around. You can pull it wherever you want. Right. You can pull it over there, you can pull it over here. But we had quite a bit of luck right in this little bowl area. And we would throw the, remember the ice eaters, the bubblers out here, because there's power right back there. So all year long, no matter how cold it gets, you can hunt right here. So that is blind number two, portable G-frame. And uh, like I said, it's for basically a north wind, which is when you tend to shoot a lot of these birds. So see you guys at the next spot. Shoo! All right, we made it to the next blind, folks. This is the other portable G-frame that we actually brought from the original duck farm to here, kind of in this south corner. So there's a well over there uh, that you can actually fill this thing. So we drained it with one of those transfer pumps. You remember that? So we drained it and actually it stayed pretty low. So now we can plant it with millet and then turn that thing on and then fill it. So you can actually make this lake kind of as deep as you want. We like to keep it a little shallower just for duck hunting purposes, but this would be kind of your south blind. So you got a nice little south wind. They come and we shot a whole bunch from here. Uh, so this is a whole- what's Also it? doubles as a deer blind too. Apparently. Really? Yeah, see we do got some deer running around here. This is a place we never deer hunted, but we saw deer almost every time we came down here. And there was a couple times we saw a couple decent bucks. What's going on here? Goose tracks. Yeah. Really? Goose Everything likes it right here. This is their this is their little spot, nice huh? Little spot. So we got, I mean, you might be thinking that blind stands out because everything is green right now. In the fall, it actually blends in pretty darn good. So this one you can fit, you know, five or six guys in it. We hunted it, like I said, a couple different properties we brought it here. So we've got a place for the north wind, the south wind, portable blinds, you can kind of move them wherever you want. Um, and this is, like I said, we got two other pit blinds. And the other two we've actually never hunted from, uh, but one of them's right over here, and the other one's on the other side. So we're going to take you guys and show you guys those. Stay tuned. Shoo! All right, we're at the next pit blind. This one right here comes off this point. So where we just were, 
it was right over there and then you can see the islands right there and then that first blind and the other pit are down on this side so this thing is facing east so you get i mean well really any wind i mean a west one would be at your back what in the sam hills that's a big fish you see that sucker mm -hmm. there's a huge fish out there what is that should we go get it should you go grab that sucker hillbilly handfish that's a long boot that's a big here? dog you know, yeah, we all got shorties on. Rip. Uh, anyway, so we got pit blind here. This one does have power, uh, so you can you know run anything. You could run your your ice eaters out here. You could run a cooker out here. Plug stuff in and be comfortable. And you're basically facing the river. So the Missouri River is actually right on the other side of here. So most of the birds come from kind of this way and then this way. Sometimes you'll get them coming off of a feed to come loaf on this side, but typically they come from this way. So on this way, you pretty much could see everything and shoot the entire span of it. So we, like I said, we never got the chance to come up here and actually hunt out of this one. We typically, so for the last couple of years, we just wanted to figure out what the birds liked. So we typically stayed in those portable blinds so we could kind of move them around. We moved them a few times, figure out what they like. Um, and honestly, they like them right where they're at right now. Like I said, last year we shot more birds here uh, than, than any of the year past. I think we kind of figured it out. Plus, I think the millet also helps. So this will be the second pit blind. And like I said, this one actually has power. We got one more. It's way on the other side. Same thing. We've never actually hunted out of that one. That one does not have power, uh, but that one actually faces west. So if you're looking at them coming from the feeds and coming over to loaf, that would be your spot. See you guys over there. Shoo! Alrighty, folks. Made it to the last and final blind. Bam! Right here. So you can see right there, there's where the other blind is. There's where the island is. Like I said, this one faces west. Uh, so we like so we never actually hunted this one. It doesn't have power in it, but it's fully functional. Um, you just gotta you know cut down some of this stuff in front of it. Well, actually, this stuff will be gone come hunting season. Um, and then grass it up a little bit, and wow, bam! I mean, you can hunt this thing 360. You got a pit there, a portable there, a pit there, a portable there, and a pit here. You can hunt in the island. If you want to get crazy out there? That's the best spot you could possibly hunt because they come in any direction, wah bam, you knock them out. So folks, there you have it. There is the tour. Uh, like I said, if you're interested in it, link will be down in the description with more information. It is officially for sale right now. Like I said, it breaks my heart that we are selling the Duck Lake. This was by far one of my favorite properties I've ever been on and had the pleasure to own. It was so fun. We took kayaks out here. We caught fish out here. We shot birds out here. I mean, it was, it was a recreation's paradise, but two hours away. It, I'm just not going to be able to use as much as I would want. Uh, and like I said, I, by being able to sell a few of these properties, we should be able to find something closer to my house. Um, that's hopefully maybe even a little bit cooler. So that being said, we'll see you guys in the next spot. Shoo! Alrighty, folks, we are at the next spot. Did you guess it? I don't know if you guessed it. You might have guessed it. More importantly, Banjo found some meat. Yep. We sold out. Banjo pulled that right from He's his rear. This has been in my glove box for about a couple weeks. Been You're started. hoarding it. So yeah. for those of you guys that tried to order beef cake jerky and couldn't get it, you can blame this guy. Bad, go. I'm not going to I'm not gonna apologize I mean, to you guys, though. We can sell oh, like this. Oh, true. Seal back up. Let's just yeah. sell half bags. Yeah. We each take a piece, yeah. we'll reseal it, and we'll sell it. If you didn't realize where we're at, we are at, this also breaks my heart, we're at the original first ever property I ever bought. Like literally, I owned this place before I bought the old house that I just moved from with the lake. This is the OG farm. We fixed this barn. This was the flood property, by the way. This is where we had all the flood, all the bullfrogs. We killed thousands of bullfrogs right where we're standing, folks, during the flood. And we haven't seen a bullfrog in two years. But yes, yeah, so this place also needs to go. It is also two hours away from my new house. Like it's exciting because I'm ready for like the next chapter, but it is sad because we put in a ton of work to all these places. This one in particular, uh, I mean, we put, I remember I was up there trying to fix this and then either a bee, a bee came and stung me and I jumped off the ladder. So yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't good. I jumped, I fell off the ladder here, but this place comes with this entire, we fixed this whole thing. I remember this thing had water in it. Uh, there's no water in it now. We put brand new gravel down. This is gonna come with the boat, okay? Oh. If the price, if the price is right, I love this. I want it to, I want it to be turnkey, okay? So this boat right here, it's got the mud motor on it. Uh, it's got everything that you could possibly need. What's going on here? Looking good. Fresh, battery, fresh yes, battery. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it'll come with this boat, um, and it's gonna come with a, a decent amount of the decoys, okay? Probably not every single one of these decoys. If the price is right, yeah, you can have them all, but. A decent, it'll be turnkey. My goal is for all three properties that we're selling to be turnkey, meaning you show up and whatever you're trying to do, if you're trying to kill a duck, a deer, or whatever, you can do it. Like you don't, you like just basically bring a gun and you can do it. I'm trying to sell these all turnkey so that way maybe one of you guys can come out and enjoy the properties that we've enjoyed for so many years now. Um, 
But anyway, so you've got all these decoys. We built these shelves, built these racks to hang all this stuff. And so we put in a man door with an actual uh, lock in it. We put power in here. We put the sliding barn door. What's going on here? Oh my gosh. Oh. Little oh. All right, comes with those. You think they need jerky or no? Well, this comes with it too. Someone's pissed. I hear him. Yeah, mama. Mama's yeah, gotta be freaking there. pissed. So, we got electric. Look, we got lights hung. I mean, we, we ran the whole thing. Remember that the roof blew off this thing? That's a whole brand new roof. Okay, so we have a new roof on it, new gravel, new doors, like new literally everything. Uh, that's This thing's just ready to go. You can come in here, you can bring your side by sides, park everything, storage shed, whatever. Um, the other thing that we did to this property is we put in a giant freaking well, and it's actually controlled on by your phone. I go on an app on my phone, I hit a button. It turns that well on. We built like a three to four acre impoundment right there. And we shot a bunch of birds. Uh, and then it also has the old riverbed. So the old riverbed snakes all the way down through this entire property. And this place is a private boat ramp so you can access all of it. I mean, I would say we shot probably close to a thousand ducks here over the, since 2019 on this property. And to prove it, we're gonna roll some clips. That's two right there. Easy peasy. Shoot him. Yep. There you go. Got him. That would be three for me. Kill him. Kill him. Got two. There we go. That'd be a little greenhead. I'm limited. I'm limited out on my wood ducks. Look at this stud muff. That was the one, uh, that was my last one on the water. I could mount this one, but I would run out of money. Nice shot. Eee! Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Shoot this one. You can see we ended up putting the hammer down at this place. Like I said, it, it really sucks to, to sell it, but hopefully it goes to somebody who could appreciate it. Uh, and maybe it lives a little bit closer, doesn't mind the drive. Uh, but since again, we have other properties that are a little bit closer to the house, we just need to consolidate it a little bit. So this right here, this is the impoundment here. Um, it's dry enough, we can shred it and then flood it and it look freaking absolutely amazing. Like I said, then you've got the old bed that kind of snakes and winds all the way down. I think it's like 100 acres of water. Um, and that's where a ton of the birds like to land and they like to roost on it. And you got this little honey hole filled with water. They come up straight down. And we don't have a blind set on this one, uh, but we've put one of those little portable blinds. We've usually put them over on that side. And it's worked out pretty good. But you can put a pit in here. You can do anything you want. So minus a blind. In fact, actually, I think we shot way more birds on this property with no blind, just sitting against the bank letting them come raining down because it's so good. You don't even have to conceal yourself, especially wearing ducks camo. Then you're definitely good to go. So property number two is on the market. Like I said, link down in the description. You guys want to check it out. Um, pretty cool duck property. Uh, it's not that many acres as well. It's definitely a lot cheaper than some of the other properties that we're selling as well. Uh, but like, you need to access the old riverbed because you have the private boat ramp right there. And that makes it freaking sweet. Plus you make some money from them nice beans over there, Banjo. Yeah. Them beans get farmed, make that cashola. So that being said, we got one more property to go to that's gonna get put on the market. You guys stay tuned. Shoo! All right, folks, we're at the last property, the final property that we are gonna be selling. And this one really breaks my heart. Even though we shot the freak, the biggest deer I've ever even laid my eye. I'm just kidding with you. We're at the missile silo, folks, which is equally as big of a bummer, okay? But we decided we're keeping the ranch because the deer hunting is irreplaceable, okay? Even though the range is two hours from my house, it's irreplaceable. Now, you could argue, one could argue, that this missile silo right here is irreplaceable. And you're correct. This is a one of one. There's not another missile silo on the planet that looks like this. Uh, but we came to the decision that we needed three properties to sell, and I just, I couldn't bring myself to do it with the ranch. We built that lake, 
and it never filled, I have to see it fill. I, I put all, I gotta see it fill, okay. And the deer hunting in the cabin, like I think that's the biggest issue with some of the hunting properties is the only one that has a living quarters area is the ranch. So although it's two hours, well, you could go stay the night there. So that kind of solves that problem. There's not really an issue with the missile silo other than the fact that there's days where I sit there and go, what do we do with the missile silo? And it's like, I don't really know. It's really cool. It's a really cool thing to own. Um, and it was really fun to renovate. I mean, we freaking made this thing sick, by the way. We're going to give you guys a full tour. If you guys don't know what this is, this is an underground nuclear missile silo, okay? It housed a nuclear rocket back in the day, okay? And there's living quarters, and we transformed it. And it's got a movie theater. It's got Wi-Fi. It's got a full kitchen. It's got a full bathroom. It's got everything you could need to literally live underground. And if a nuke goes off, you're going to be just a o okay uh but it's a property we don't use enough um we kind of came in we made as many videos as we could i feel like it's best served to somebody who could fully appreciate it a legitimate doomsday prepper and some of you guys might be thinking well flair what if doomsday happens what are you gonna do then where are you gonna go i'll have to cross that listen i know the code so maybe i'll just come out here and maybe i'll make an arrangement whoever buys it shit hits the fan I get a room in here since I built the thing. Maybe I'll just maybe I'll just make one of those. Maybe then it's a win-win, okay? Where I still get a place to fall out to, uh, but I can pass the ownership on to somebody else who maybe wants to do more things with it. That's just it. We're project out, ladies and gentlemen. Like I can't take on any more big projects. We just built this house. We just did this. We renovated the ranch cabin. We renovated the old house on the property that I just moved to. We're about to start building a pond. We're next to the house, like in the backyard, like we can't keep doing all these pro like I can only do so much, okay? And for us to undertake another massive renovation of the missile silo, I feel like, oh, I just don't know if I have it in me. It's this thing's over two hour drive from my house. And it's hard to get people out here to work. It's hard to get ever any you know materials down here and stuff like that. And I feel like we did what we needed to do. We bought it showcased it to you guys made some really 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 awesome renovations that we're about to go show you right now and made it basically did it to the fullest extent that i thought we could physically achieve it. now if i kept this thing for five years you know would i get bored enough to find something else yes i would rather pass this on to somebody else plus we need the money for beef Kedrick hq so that's really kind of what we're dealing with right now and this thing um you know i think somebody would buy it i think it'd be it'd be pretty cool like i said when i first saw it i was like i have to have it and now that i had it and i renovated it somebody else can have it so we're gonna go in through this door right here and we're gonna head down into the actual missile silo but this thing sits on like six or seven acres of land um and there's actually two concrete pads uh, on this side where the old Kwanzaa huts used to sit. So you could bring an RV, a camper, you could put a little uh, pole barn, barn a minimum of some sort. There's one here and there's one on the other side as well. Full electricity, like I said, Wi-Fi, literally everything you could possibly want. We'll see you guys down there. So right down this hallway, we're entering into the abyss. We are going underground right now, ladies and gentlemen. And man, does that temperature change feel good. It's like 94 outside right now, and it's like a 65 degrees down here. This feels freaking incredible. Oh, it's like refreshing now. Yeah, it's it like is. walking into a refrigerator. This is awesome. So through these tunnels, I'm not giving you guys the whole spiel, but basically we're just we're basically weaving our way underground to the actual living quarters. This is a, called a blast door, and there's five of them. That's number two. And you come through here, and this is the room that we renovated. We completely renovated the entire thing and made it fully, fully livable. Bam! Look at this sucker. So it's even got a foosball table, okay? It's got a movie theater and a little popcorn machine, a full-size couch. We've got bunk beds right here, ready to rock and roll. I set up an office down here as well. Um, like I said, we ran Starlink down here, so you've got Wi-Fi, so you've got an office you can work on. You've got an area for all your pews. This is the missile like diagram of it. I thought that was kind of cool. And then here's a bunch of rockets. Look, full-blown kitchen, like full-blown, Turn it on, cooktop works. You've got running water in the sink. You've got refrigerator. You've got this thing, which can do everything. You can even make, this is an alcoholic Keurig, okay? You got your microwave, which works. You got your water, which works. It, I mean, it's fully, fully livable. The, if you're wondering, the kitchen table is over there because it's holding the projector, but there would be a kitchen table here. Uh, and then back here is the bathroom, which has a shower, uh, and a toilet and all that stuff like that. So, like I said, we renovated this thing to its fullest extent. I couldn't imagine 
what else we could have done to this thing. But you've got a sink here where you've got your water, you've got a flushing toilet, and then you've got a shower right back here. And that the, oh yeah, I'll turn this on. There's a light right here. There you go, now you can see. So if you wanna take a nice shower, look at that, instant water. We are underground, like 50 feet underground right now. So if you're a doomsday prepper and want the absolute most epic doomsday shelter of all time, that's fully livable, that's gonna be wife approved. My wife approved it, yours will probably approve it. Um, this could be yours. I said link will be down in the description. Um, like I said, it's, it's one of those projects where it's like, to take it to the next level is so overwhelming for me. I'm just like, I don't know if we can handle it. And I don't wanna just sit on it. I want somebody else to enjoy it. Like we documented the whole thing. We made a ton of cool videos. Um, you know, we've stayed in it, we've done a bunch of stuff and we just sat there and racked our brains. I'm like, oh man, we could do this. We could build a pond and we could do the lower level and we could stock the silo full of fish. And then we got so busy with the new house and everything else going on. I'm just like, I'm spreading myself too thin. And again, I'm basically bringing it from a radius perspective and saying, well, what's the furthest property away? Let's get rid of that one and move it all the way up. And like I said, we're gonna keep developing stuff closer to my house. You're probably not gonna get one of these close to the house. It's probably a one of one. Can you keep the foosball table? Um, for the right price, the foosball table could be here. Nah, I'll leave it. I, I don't plan on taking it out. I mean, if you want to carry it up the stairs. No, not really. Okay, then it's going to stay it here. It take like two hours to put together, so it, I'm going to miss it. I am going to miss it. I'm, I really am going to miss it. Like, it's going to be one of those things, like, you're going to look back at 20 years and be like, that one time you bought a missile and you renovated it? That was crazy. And that's all you're going to say, and then you're going to move on with your life. Uh, but it is pretty crazy to think that this thing got full, like, full electricity. I mean, we did all this stuff. I'll throw up some before and after pictures real fast. So you can see all the different pictures that are on there before and after. I mean, it's night and day different. Okay. Put in an incredible amount of work. Um, and again, I would love to keep this place. I just, I just don't see myself coming back here often enough to justify owning it. Uh, like I said, I don't see us coming back. What's going on? It comes with bagel bites. Banjo's bagel bites come no. with it in case you, in case you get hungry. So, um, that, anyways, that's the main level. I'll give you guys a tour of the rest since we're already here. Um, it gets cool, or well, I don't say cooler, but it gets equally as cool. Look out! Which one of these does this? There it is. I don't know. I'm just hitting them. I'll flip really? back later. <laughs> so you come down the staircase. So we'll go down to the control center. So the control center is where they had all the computers to launch the rocket. Um, and this would have been the kind of like the V2, which is where we would renovate secondly. And again, I just. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I was like, there's just no way I have the energy to make this place. It's Jason's, by the way, too. I'd feel wrong renovating it. Like kicking Jason out of here. But this place, to get this place livable like the upstairs, you're talking like another year. Again, if it was really, really close to my house, I'd say keep it. Because it's like every Friday or something, we always go down. It's like, dude, you're talking about like a five-hour commute down and back. How are you supposed to get anything done? It takes you five hours to come down and back. And it's like, oh, well, Flair, you could stay there. You could drive and work for a week. I got other stuff. Like a kid and a wife. I can't be doing that. Like, we got too much stuff going on. I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm just being honest with you guys. Too much stuff going on. I think for us, in the satisfaction we were looking for, we got it out of this place. We bought it. We renovated it. We did everything we wanted. We got down in the silo. I mean, I conquered my fear of heights at this place, okay? A lot of cool things happened at this spot. Um, like I said, I think we hit to a point where, especially since we need the Beefcake Jerky HQ figured out, I'm like, eh, this would be, this would be one who could possibly you know, get rid of. So anyways, it comes with the millions of MREs under this floor. Yeah, Banjo. the whole floor is You can live for like 10 years off of the MREs that are down under there. What do you, you think? Yeah, cannonball in for like for, for, oh, for, for the MEMS? Yeah. I, should, I, should I just jump in? Yeah. We never we, did it. We made it this far and didn't drown. Let's go ahead and try it. So then you come down another flight of stairs and you go through this tunnel right here. So this tunnel leads you to where the rocket was. So like I said, at some point there's a nuke rocket stored here. And this is where it was stored. You go through this little passageway, and you go through here, and you are officially where the rocket was. Woo! Shoo! Look at that. Comes with the raft. You can have that raft down there, and all these ladders and everything else, the lights. Yeah, we got two rafts. Yeah. That's actually a really, really nice raft. So, I mean, we took the underwater. I'll, I'll quit talking about it. We just roll the clips. Ha! You can give her a toast? Yeah. Do you have clothes on? No. Wait, what? Who's cranking it back up? <laughs> oh, we got it. Let's go. A nice ass chunk of metal. Okay, take a rest. <sighs> oh, we gotta get a better ladder, boys. 
Holy shit. Good? Oh, the sewer, dude. You can almost get in there. Got it all. Oh, oh, oh. What's wrong with it? Ugh. Did it need to run a little dude, bit? Dude, that's bad. <laughs> Found thousands of packets of mustard. 25 year old bananas. Oh, that's good. Do you see my wiener? Yo, dude, I, right as you came around that corner, I was looking at your wiener. Those of jellyfish! I just saw it! I swear to really? God. Really? Yes. So, as you saw, that's all we've done here. We've done a ton of stuff. We had fun. We explored it. Um, like I said, just. I feel like we're just at the point where like, if we want to take this thing to like the, the actual next level, like the coolest thing, it's going to take way too many resources and way too much time. And right now, I feel like it's in a great spot to pass it on to the next owner where it's not this crazy overwhelming project where they can bite, what did I say, turnkey. If you don't want to do anything to it, you don't have to. You can still sleep here. You can work from home or from the silo. On the internet, you can watch a movie. You can take a shower. You can go poop. You can go cook something in the kitchen. Like, everything that would, like, describe turnkey for a doomsday shelter, we check all the freaking boxes. Min minus the missile. No missile included. We don't have the missile, in case that's on your list that needs checked. Um, but that's, we thought, like, it was a good spot to sell. Because again, it's turnkey. I hate selling things that aren't turnkey. Because you know why? Because I hate buying things that aren't turnkey. Uh, I don't mind it. You buy a lot of those, though. I see. I've never bought anything turnkey. Now that I think about it, uh, everything I buy needs work, which is part of the fun. It's kind of doing it. But uh, again, if I'm going to buy something not turnkey, I'm going to make it turnkey. And I feel like this missile silo is effectively today turnkey for the next owner. So I think it's a good spot to pass the torch to somebody else. Hopefully, it's a prepper. Uh, it, hopefully it's something that will improve this place and then hopefully maybe one day we can come back Maybe if I sell it we can make an agreement where I get to come back in a year and, and do a tour and see what updates they've done But this was kind of a once-in-a-lifetime deal. I mean who else can say they've owned a nuke missile silo? I mean like the rocket went through like Pretty it's really kind of mind-boggling when you think about it So we're gonna look back 20 years like that was wild There was a lot happening right then and there but for right now we're closing this book We're closing this chapter. We're moving on to the next chapter which would be hopefully a Beefcake Jerky HQ. That's really freaking sweet that we can do some stuff with um, and sell more Banjo's meat. Because Banjo said he's got meat and you guys want to put it in your mouth. With that being said, thanks for watching today's video. Like I said, the links will be down in the description down below if you guys want to go check them out. You've got the Duck Lake, you got the OG Duck Farm, and you've got the Nuclear Missile Silo all for sale right now. If you guys want to check them out, they'll be linked down in the description down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video and peace.